to record. Hey! <laughs> uh, I've officially lost my mind. Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah Wild Create and Educate. Today I will be showing you how to create a stencil for a custom doormat in Cricut Design Space. Cricut Design Space is my least favorite program to design in. Um, it's really hard to customize typography and scripts and it's just a pain in the ass. <laughs> I love you Cricut, but the program needs a little bit of help. Um, I have done two other tutorials. So if you have Adobe Illustrator, there is an Illustrator tutorial on how to create a stencil for this project we're going to be doing. I've also created one with Inkscape. Inkscape is a free program that you can use. It is also a vector based program. So it's like Illustrator. I think I said it's free and you can create your own SVG files as well with it. So it's a great alternative if you're really struggling with um, Cricut Design Space or you don't have the means to get Illustrator. Um, or you can suffer along with me and I'm going to show you how to create the stencil for our doormat in Design Space. It's not that bad, it's just makes me growl. Okay. So you're going to open up Cricut Design Space and depending on what measurements you would like to use, you can go to um, the hamburger menu there and go to settings. Depending on where you live or what you use, Imperial or metric, I'm just going to change it to metric for a second. I'm Canadian, <laughs> but I also <laughs> Uh, remember the dimensions in centimeters for the custom door mat that we're using, which is the IKEA Trampa mat, uh, the bigger size. So I'm just going to hit done for now. I'll switch back to inches um, because the first step now we're going to do is create a shape and that shape is going to be a square. And with design space, it automatically creates just one random square for us. And we're going to change the dimensions of that to be the same dimensions as that custom doormat. That way we can see how big we need to make our stencil, the placement of it. It's just more of a guide for us. So you're going to click this unlock tool right here and up in width and height. We're going to change width to 90 centimeters and our height is 60. And you can use the um, zoom out option right here just to zoom out a bit. And that is our ginormous doormat. So I'm just going to go back to the hamburger menu and now um, change back to Imperial because I work in inches. All right, so now we're going to pick our typeface. So the first typeface. I am going to choose is a script font and when you're choosing a script font for its stencil you want to make sure it's nice and smooth and doesn't have any bumpy ragged edges because when you're stenciling onto a bristly surface like the doormat um, you, you will lose those details and it, it, it's, um, it gets frustrating. <laughs> so we're going to use a nice script that I have so just um, clicking on the text tool here brings up the add text option and we're going to type in come in which for some reason pops it all the way up here so we are going to drag that onto the middle of our artboard and using the two arrow tools here or the two arrows we're just going to click and drag just to make it bigger okay now I want my font to be a script like I mentioned so you can either choose what's on just on your system if you have Cricut access you can choose just Cricut or you can choose both so I know the font I want is on my system and it's called other way which you can get on creative market so you should support some artists out there if you like the typeface and I'm just gonna hit enter or to search and it's gonna be the first one here we go okay I don't know why it automatically applies letter spacing to the script but here's one thing that 
I dislike about design space. And you can even look at the other tutorials to see how limited with typography this actually is. So we're going to fix that letter spacing by just making that zero, which is up here. And even so, I just want to cry. So even so, even with doing that, by just select making it zero, the person that designed this typeface had a custom measurement in mind when each letter was placed next to each other. I'm sorry, Cricut Design Space, but you really butchered that. So even with the in, those letters are way too close to each other. The space is ginormous and the O and the M don't even connect. But in my other tutorials, if you look at Inkscape or Illustrator, it actually all joins perfectly. I'm getting choked up just from talking about this. <laughs> you tell I'm, I'm a big time design nerd. So there is a way around this. Don't worry. This isn't that like, oh, this is ugly. We can make this pretty and, and fix it. So I'm just going to take the arrow tool and zoom in on that. And we're gonna go up here to advanced. And under advanced, we will have to ungroup two letters. That's right. Now we have 8,000 layers on every single letter of your script. So taking the M, we're gonna move this over using our arrow keys. And I'm just gonna literally optically line it up and make it nice. The E. I don't think there was was no connection there. The I, bring that out. Basically, this is um, called kerning in the design world, if you wanted to know. The space between letters, my friends, needs to be pretty, and visible, and easy to read. So now I'm gonna take I and N, and I'm gonna go down to the layer tool and weld those little two guys together and bring that whole word over. Now I can take the other letters by clicking on them and holding down shift. Sorry, I didn't mention that. And you're going to go to weld again. So now we fixed our script. Doesn't that look better? Wait, let me just show you in comparison to what it did before. Come in, I said to my lovely typeface friend. <laughs> I think I need to. <laughs> oh, COVID, what have you done to me? Um, all right, yeah, that's, that's something else. So let's just uh, do this, yeah. Yeah, nice difference, eh? It's beautiful. Fuck you, I don't do what you tell me. Okay. So because we welded these letters together, it is now a shape. We cannot edit it. So you would have to do the type all over again if you needed to make any changes or if you had any spelling errors or anything like that, that's fine. Okay, so my next pet peeve for typography is, I'll show you. So I'm gonna add my second line. It's gonna say, just kidding. Enter. We are social distancing. Just gonna command A and select all of that and change my font. So my font is, or my typeface, is going to be Fira Sands. Now, Fira Sands, I'm just gonna hit enter, has multiple styles. So there's a light, there's a medium, there's a semi bold, there's a bold, there's like an extreme bold. But let's just show you what happens. So we're gonna click Fire Sands. I'm gonna go down here and just drag it over here. And underneath style, this is what it gives me. Regular bold italic, bold italic. And these aren't even the regular bold italic, bold italic that the font, or sorry, that the typeface has. This is what Cricut Design Space program thinks it should look like. If I actually did the Fire Sands bold and compared it to what Cricut Design Space shows, it's gonna be totally different. So I'm just gonna leave it regular and I'm just gonna increase the size of this. 
I'm gonna change my letter spacing to zero. Oh my god. <laughs> That's horrible! Why? Like, you guys really need to just go look at the other tutorials just to see the difference between the spacing when it's just regular or auto compared to what they think auto is. I'm sorry, Cricket, I love your machine, but this is not fun. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my line spacing up. At least that kind of will look nice. And I'm gonna, yeah. Look, it's not even like doing it proportionally really. Okay, so we're gonna line this right. And I want this to be all caps, which I don't think this has. So we're just gonna have to double click in it and the type and put just kidding in all caps. We are social. We have to create the caps ourselves and we're gonna fix these I'm just shaking my head. We're gonna fix these spaces in between the words and the spacing in between the letters. <laughs> Tracking and kerning. Now you guys are learning graphic design terms. All right, the letting or the line space, whatever you wanna call it, is in between lines. We can keep that as is and we're gonna go to advanced and ungroup to letters. Yay, so now we have 8,000 layers. Now before Design Space crashes on us, we are going to save this just in case. Cricut tutorial. I don't know why I just automatically wanted to write caps. It was like I was yelling, this is Cricut stencil. Let's zoom in and fix these letters that are hideous. I'm just using the arrow tool um, to bring them over. I'm welding that together when it's done. None of my old profs are watching this. I'm judging my kerning right now. Okay, so let's just um, weld the sentence together and we're going to select both by holding down shift and going up to align and align right and then welding those two together. All right, so just kidding, we are social distancing. And I'm gonna rotate by just clicking on this little rotate tool here. Come in. Awesome. All right, so we're, we're getting there. Remember to save often. So the next step, we're going to remove um, the background because we don't need it anymore. That is the size of the stencil that we like. And we are going to now create, um, we're going to make this into a stencil font. So that way these little bits and pieces of letters um, won't get lost and they'll just stay as one continuous shape and you just fill in you'll see, you'll fill in the area afterwards. So we're gonna cut little 
shapes into these pieces um, just so they stay all together. So if you've ever seen a stencil font, let's just see if we can find one. So it's more so for these center pieces really because when you're creating the stencil that way you just fill in these areas um, you don't really have to worry about an S it's one continuous piece the O we would worry about losing these that middle piece so I'll show you how we're gonna do that so next we are going to zoom in and we're gonna create another shape Square, bring that over, unlock it, and just shrink it down to whatever skinny rectangle size. Like that. And just lock it again. You can change the color of that um, just so it's easier to see, doesn't matter what color. And we're just going to put it over here. And I'm going to Go over to the panel on the right and just hit duplicate and do the same thing on the bottom duplicate that again and for the e so now before we do the sentence at the bottom i'm going to select the little rectangle you made and then holding down shift, you're going to select the bottom piece and you're going to go to slice. It's going to create a whole bunch of um, different layers and we're just going to get rid of this one, this one, and this one. Go to delete and you'll see that it's now created that little slice in there for us. So we're going to drag this down just so it's at the bottom and repeat that step. So selecting one and selecting that slice. Bringing it to the bottom. I'm just going to delete it after. This, this. Usually the result always comes up on the top. So we can get rid of all these extra pieces. I don't know why it just has these delete. There we go. That's a little wonky, but that's okay. I'm probably not gonna use the stencil. <laughs> I'm gonna use the other ones from either Inkscape or Illustrator. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So we're gonna save that. And we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. So we are going to create a shape, square. Unlock the square. I slouch a lot when I design. Um, change the color. And zoom in a little bit more. Hold down shift when you're rotating if you want it to be um, like a perfect 90 degree. And we're gonna duplicate that. Okay, now we're ready to do the same thing like we did with our script font. 
where we take the shape, hold down shift, selecting the sentence, and you're going to slice it, which brings up the slice result and our cuts, which you can delete. All right, there we go. We're that much closer to creating our stencil. So now we need to actually um, inverse this. So reverse it because this is the stencil part that we'll be painting. So we need to make the little custom mat squares um, or rectangles, depending on which mat you're gonna use. So there are two um, mat sizes, the 12 by 12 and the 12 by 24. And the maximum width, um, I believe is 11.5 inches to cut. However, with the stencil, we're gonna be doing 11.25 inches. And so we're going to create a shape, our friendly square that likes to make his own size. And we are going to make this a different color. And the width is gonna be 11.25 and so is the height. We're also gonna move this up to the top corner here. That way I know for sure that they, the stencils are bumped right up against one another. Even if we cut a letter off, it's gonna get cut properly. And when we tape it together, it's gonna look great. So you are going to take that square and go to more and in position, your X and Y is gonna be zero. So it's taking that top left hand point and bringing it up to the zero point there. And now we're gonna duplicate that square. And because it duplicates it, it shifts it down. We know that the X is gonna be 11.25 and the Y is gonna be zero. So that just brought that right over, bumped it up right next to that other square. Um, and I'm just gonna change the color just so we can make sure we see everything properly after. Uh, and then we need one more. So we're gonna duplicate that square and we're gonna do the same thing where the position, I have some math, hold on. So Y is zero. <laughs> and this is gonna be 23, I believe. I can't math, 11.5, oh, 25, I thought it was five. <laughs> oh my gosh, 22.5, I can math, I can do it. Okay, so i gonna change this color just cause. Right, so now we have our lovely little guys and we are going to take our stencils, selecting both of them, and we're gonna weld them both together. All right, uh, let's see if this will fit. Okay, so because we know that these are exactly together, we're gonna select them all by holding shift or just selecting them in the layers and we're gonna bring them down and over. I know they're all together, so there we go. Taking our stencil, we're gonna bring this up and we're gonna see how we can fit this in here. Now this one, it looks like we can actually make it all fit. So try not to cut off the like the smaller typefaces. Um, let's just shrink this overall just a little bit. There we go. That looks good. Eyes just over the orange. It's okay if we lose some of that A, it's already a stencil and then I'll, or it's already got the stencil font. I think that's okay. So we are going to duplicate this three times. Sorry, we're gonna have a total of three. We're gonna duplicate it two more times. So one, two. Now we're gonna select all of them and we want to align them left and to the top. 
This is where we create the stencil part. We're almost done. So taking, just clicking on one of the stencil typography and one of the squares. So we are selected both. You're going to slice that. Okay, there's all our slice results. So we can delete this one, this one, oops, this one, this one, and this one. And selecting the next one and your blue square, or whatever color you made, same thing, slice that. We want to keep that blue, see how it's cut out in the thumbnail. So we're going to get rid of this this and this and last but not least this one and the orange slice and we get rid of these and now we have our stencil ready to be cut from Cricut Design Space so <laughs> you can change these back to um, black or whatever color, it doesn't matter because you're gonna use the same material that you're using to stencil. Um, you can use film, stencil film, you can use even just paper, cardstock, um, and then this is ready to be made. So when we click on make it, it's all fit in perfectly. I'm just gonna hit cancel. And for the final video, if you watch the other tutorials on how to make the same stencil, uh, we are going to put the stencil together and make our doormat together. Let me know if you have any questions and um, I hope you get more out of Cricut Design Space than I do um, when it comes to typography. It's great for other things and especially for the projects that are already created for you if you have Cricut Access. It is a good program. It's just limited, that's all. See you next time.